Let's learn about small fiber neuropathy. So this is a disease that affects the small nerve fibers, which include the myelinated A delta and unmyelinated C fibers. And these are the fibers that are involved in autonomic function and temperature and pain transmission. The condition is commonly associated with either diabetes or hyperlipidemia or both but half of cases are idiopathic even after extensive investigation, which this disease does require. The symptoms can include burning pain and dysesthesias in the distal extremities. There can be autonomic symptoms such as abnormal sweating, dry eyes or dry mouth. There can be GI symptoms such as vomiting, diarrhea, or constipation. And there can be genitourinary symptoms such as urinary frequency or nocturia or erectile dysfunction. Importantly, the neurologic exam is normal, which distinguishes it from large fiber neuropathy. And sometimes there can be decreased or increased pinprick and temperature sensation though. So in terms of evaluation, uh, commonly a EMG and nerve conduction studies are done. Uh, however, they are normal because these studies evaluate the large fibers. So how do you diagnose it then? A QSART is something that is helpful, quantitative pseudomotor axon reflex testing, and this can be abnormal in about three quarters of patients and can be the earliest manifestation of small fiber neuropathy. So it's performed by the stimulation of sweat glands by the iontophoresis of acetylcholine into the skin. This will stimulate sweating and it evaluates the postganglionic sympathetic cholinergic pseudomotor function. Another way to diagnose this is by thermoregulatory sweat test. So the patient is placed in a warming chamber and they're covered in a powder that changes color with sweating. So as they get warmer, the parts of their body that are normal will start sweating and the powder, you, you'll be able to see it. In small fiber neuropathy, though, the parts affected by the neuropathy will still remain abnormal and won't change color. So most commonly the feet. Skin biopsy is a commonly accepted way of confirming the diagnosis. It's both sensitive and specific, and you'll see reduced intraepidermal nerve fiber density in segments affected by small fiber neuropathy. Note that if you biopsy something that is not involved, then the sensitivity goes down a lot. So after confirming the diagnosis, you'll want to investigate for a cause and most commonly, the labs sent are the hemoglobin A1c to look for diabetes, a lipid panel, uh, TSH for hypothyroidism, and a B12 to look for deficiency. If those are negative, other causes can be sought. Um, chronic alcohol use is a common cause of small fiber neuropathy. Some viruses such as HIV, autoimmune conditions, amyloidosis, you might send a a serum and urine immunofixation, there can be connective tissue diseases associated with small fiber neuropathy, or it can be caused by chemotherapy or perineoplastic disorders. Treatment is fairly straightforward and pretty much the same as for other neuropathies. So anticonvulsants can work, such as gabapentin and pergabalin. Tricyclics can work, such as amitriptyline and SNRIs such as venlafaxine can also work. Uh, topical lidocaine can be helpful, especially if there's only a small area of pain involved. In terms of the prognosis, the disease slowly worsens over time and it can also progress to include the large fibers.